destiny. It's the bet made by a president and an entire country. July 18, 1969, 55,000 miles from the moon. American astronauts Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong exit through the upper hatch of the Apollo 11 command module to go inspect the lunar module, the Eagle. The lunar module is the most beautiful machine ever engineered and built. Some of the things that made the LEM such a challenge was that it had to be a very powerful, very sturdy, very robust machine, but it couldn't weigh anything at all. Two days later, the incredible American spacecraft must attempt the first ever manned lunar landing in history. The mood is tense. The 23-foot-high lunar model has never been fully tested in real conditions. And at Mission Control in Houston, many were preparing for the worst. I did not think we were going to make it on this mission. I figured we would land probably the fourth attempt. The United States was prepared for the eventuality that the astronauts would be lost on the surface of the moon. There's no going back. The Apollo spacecraft attached to the Eagle lunar module is hurtling toward the moon, preparing for its entry into lunar orbit. It was a journey Apollo missions 8 and 10 already made some months earlier. The difference this time, though, is huge. Apollo 11 will have to land on the moon and take off again. Everything is going as planned, but some confidential information causes alarm at NASA headquarters in Houston. At the same time that Apollo 11 was launching toward the moon, the Soviet Union was readying and even launching its own spacecraft on a similar journey. Luna 15, an unmanned Soviet probe, was launched three days before Apollo 11. It is already in orbit around the moon and is preparing for its lunar landing. America is not the only nation committed to conquering space. The USSR is a formidable adversary, willing to do anything to be the first on lunar ground. A collision with Luna could be fatal to the American astronauts. And in the middle of the Cold War, a dramatic event like this would have unprecedented consequences. Concerned that Luna 15 would strike Apollo, NASA had one of its astronauts, Frank Borman, reach out to a contact in the Soviet Union, the president of the Soviet Academy of Sciences, Mislav Keldish, but was unable to have a conversation with him because Borman did not speak Russian and Keldish did not speak English. By the time NASA manages to get a hold of Luna 15's flight plans, the fate of the two rival missions is already sealed. Apollo 11 and Luna 15 will never cross paths. The first will make history. The second, the Soviet mission, will crash into the moon in the Sea of Crises, 13 hours after Neil Armstrong's first step. The incident marks the height of space race tensions between the Soviets and the Americans, a competition that began 10 years earlier and knew no bounds. October 4th, 1957. A small probe, some 23 inches in diameter, enters orbit 590 miles above the Earth. Its name is Sputnik, and it is Russian. Its beep will taunt the United States amidst a Cold War where the scientific competition between the two world powers is in reality a military rivalry. The American scientific and intelligence community knew that the Russians would launch a satellite probably in 1957 or 1958. It was also frightening because the ability to launch a satellite was the same as the ability to lob a nuclear warhead. America as well must prove that space belongs to it. 
the Vanguard program will be its weapon against the Soviet satellite. Almost two months to the day after the success of Sputnik,